wherever you are in the world. This is Stephen on BeLive.TV, and I know I said earlier we were live in 45 minutes, but we are live now. And uh, I'll just bring myself up on screen as I drop that down. And here we are. And I've got my agenda today. Um, what I don't have is my co-host, uh, because Tina, the lady in the bottom right-hand corner of that photograph, is actually on the road at the moment. So always have, when you're broadcasting, a plan B to go to in case your co-host doesn't arrive and just start the show. So welcome to the show and to the replay. If you're watching this on replay, we've got a full agenda, which you can see in the post that's up above. And if you want to join me on camera, then all we need to do is to type guest and you can join me on the camera. So please type guest to join us on the show or me on the show. That's probably right. Now, we do have an agenda to get through today. And the first thing I'd like to talk about is creating frames for your show. I'm going to post a link in the comments. So I'm going to take that link. Um, I'm going to post it directly to Facebook in the comments. And there you have it. Now, I'm pretty new to this designing your own frame sort of thing. And um, well, I've done a frame. I'm going to show it to you. I don't really be able to see it. This is going to be the tricky bit. So I'm going to bring the frame on screen and you can see now this looked perfect. When I actually did this, when I created this using uh, Google drawings and brought it into BeLive.TV, this frame looked perfect. But at the moment, uh, as you can see, it's I'm just going to find out whether we've actually gone live or not. Yes, we're live. Uh, so that's good. Um, I just checked it to make sure <coughs> we are actually live. When I uh, created the frame for this show, and I just hide the caption, you'll see that it's too light. I mean, if I take myself off camera, you won't hear me, so I can't do anything about it. So I'm going to switch that frame off. All I'm saying is in the Belivers group, you will find details about creating your own frames. Now, the system is very simple and straightforward. You uh, go to your Google account and you go to uh, create on Google Drive a new document. You select Google Drawings and the rest of the instructions are all in the video. But Google Drawings is the simplest way. And a shout out to Antonio who discovered it and showed it to us uh, is the simplest way to create a frame for your BeLive broadcast. What I would say, though, is that you need to test the frame not only when you create the show, but do a test live run to make sure. I, I wish I'd done that because basically on this show, there is no, it's not showing up. It's not right. So there you are. Uh, and I want to say hello to uh, Didar. Thank you for joining the show. And just talking about creating frames. Uh, Tina's not with me today. She's actually on the road. So if anybody wants to come on camera, then all you need to do is to uh, type guest and you're more than welcome to join me on the show. So there we have it. So frames are the first uh, thing which we're talking about, creating frames, and the link is in the comments on Facebook. The second thing we're going to talk about is captioning your show. Now, we know that most of the views of any video are after we've been live. And we can't have live captioning, but we can put on captions after the show. And if you download the video from the live show and upload it to YouTube, YouTube have the most amazing captioning facility, which is about, mm, I would say, about 90% accurate. So you can edit the captions over on Google and then having edited them, not only is your YouTube account correct, but you can then download them and take them back across to Facebook and add them to recorded video on Facebook. Now, all the details for doing that 
are actually in the link I'm going to post now. I'm just going to copy the link. And so this is captioning videos. Now, the reason for captioning videos is threefold. One, when people see your show in their feed, a recorded show, if they see the text moving, then they're all likely to start reading it. They may have the sound off. So the text captioning means that they're able to read what you're saying, and that might draw them in to actually watch. The second reason for doing captioning is quite simply uh, for basically uh, to allow everybody the chance to actually watch your videos. So anybody who's hearing impaired can actually watch the video and follow the text. And the third reason, which I didn't immediately come to my mind, is that you can actually use those captions as part of your SEO. So captioning a video is good for SEO, it's good for discoverability, and it's simple and straightforward to do. Hello, John, nice to see you. If you want to join me on camera, you're more than welcome to do so. Just type guest uh, in the comments, and you too can be live on Tuesday as well as on Thursday. Um, if you're camera ready, of course, but just type guest, you'll get a message and uh, that will get you in here. So captioning videos, you'll find the recorded video is in the Belivers group and you can just go and watch it. It's only about eight minutes long and it tells you exactly how to download from Facebook, upload to YouTube, put the captions on, edit them, download them and put them, download the captions and put them onto your Facebook video. All in all, uh, depends how long the video is. If you're talking about a five minute video, the whole thing uh, would take you about 15 minutes to do. And as I say, it's worth it to catch people who are just skimming through. They'll say the text. It's for, uh, I'm searching for a word which I've lost. So I'm going to say people who are hearing impaired will be able to read the text and it's good for SEO as well. So those are the three things that captioning helps with. And it's simple and straightforward to do. As I say, 15 minutes for a five minute video and then go pro rata in terms of length of your video. In terms of doing live videos, most people tend to run for uh, 60 minutes. And the beautiful thing is that the captioning mechanism on YouTube can translate all different accents. It can translate my Lancashire accent, it can translate John's Midlands accent, and it can translate Tina's Tennessean accent. Is Tennessean a word? Okay, on to the next thing. Things to do uh, around live broadcasting. Jeff Adams is live in the Belivers group tomorrow. Uh, and basically at the moment, Jeff's got a post in there and he is asking for people to actually comment uh, as to what you'd like to know about. So Jeff is live at 8 p.m. tomorrow. The link is in the post. You can follow it. Again, it's in the Belivers group. All these things take place in the Belivers group. Over 5,200 members, all actively involved in live broadcasting on Belive.tv. Now, Jeff, to my mind, uh, is quite possibly the best video chat show host there is uh, on the planet. I mean, he was voted so last year by his peers. Um, and if you can catch one of his shows, and this is a private show, this is actually only for the Belivers group. It doesn't appear outside the group, and you can ask Jeff anything. It's an Ask Me Anything show, an AMA. Uh, so if you've got questions about live broadcasting and you want to ask the maestro, then you can. Though Jeff does describe himself as an internet streaming specialist and not a guru or a maestro. I like that term, internet streaming specialist because it describes a lot of the people uh, who are involved in live broadcasting that we know from the blab days. And uh, Mr. Upton has said people who live in Tennessee or come from Tennessee are called Tennesseans or Tennesseans. Right. OK. Now we know. I got it right. I guessed. I guessed. And say hello to Raven. Raven, it's nice to see you. I'm looking forward to the show on Thursday. Show on Thursday with Raven is at 10.30 a.m. on the Pacific Coast, PT, at 1.30 p.m. on the East Coast and at 6.30 in the UK. 
Uh, so Raven and I, we always have a blast when we're broadcasting and uh, I'm looking forward to it. And thank you for dropping in, Raven. Um, if anybody wants to join me on camera, though, all you need to do, because this is show is automated, is, <laughs> is to type in guest uh, to join us on the show. And John is clarifying where he got his information from. I'm just going to scroll back up because it's disconcerting. I scrolled down wrongly. Uh, and hello to Jeremiah's, Jeremiah's and uh, greetings. And John is saying that he got the Tennessean information from Wikipedia. You can't beat Wikipedia. And uh, Raven is saying, yes, yes, can't wait to broadcast your business to profits. Which I say is at Thursday, 6 p.m. in 6:30 p.m. in the UK, 1:30 p.m. Eastern, and 10:30 a.m. Uh, Pacific. So there we are. Oh, I was just mentioning Jeff Adams, wasn't I? I suppose I should show you the man himself. Uh, so that's Jeff Adams, and he's live tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern, and you can ask him your questions about live broadcasting. He's making suggestions there on the topics that he would like to take. But the man himself is live tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern, in the Belivers group. And uh, I will be watching the replay on that because 8 p.m. Eastern is 1 a.m. in the morning and I am not going to be up at 1 a.m. in the morning, even for Mr. Jeff Adams. So I'll be catching the replay in the UK. Right, uh, now the next thing that happened is, uh, I don't know if you noticed or not, it's not apparent from where I am at the moment, but BeLive.TV is now four people on screen. Uh, instance, this graphic here, and the reason I'm mentioning this is that this was used yesterday as an official uh, graphic by BeLive.TV to actually promote the show. <laughs> I'll come back to the photo in a minute, John. Uh, and this is a Be Live promotion, and there's a text that went along with it, which I wrote, which was about being dynamic. And as you can notice, uh, you can't actually see me pointing here, but if the bottom left-hand corner is a friend of John and I uh, called Peter Stewart, who is in Aberdeen, and I put that four people on screen is dynamite, and it's dynamic, and there you've got Peter in a laid-back pose. Well, I thought it was a sort of... The opposite to what the, what the text was, but you should, may see that uh, graphic flying around for the next couple of days as Be Live TV promote uh, four people on the show, and you may also see. Uh, oh, I got it wrong there. God, this is live. Uh, you may also see this graphic as well, uh, doing the rounds as Be Live TV have four seats. Now, I'm last week managed to uh, pu publish the free uh, course on Udemy for BeLive.TV, which is the mechanics of doing a solo show, an interview, or a talk show, and that's three people on the screen. Now, that's the free course, and that is available now, and you can get the updated free course if you go here. Just let me post the link. Bear with me a moment. And posted in so that's the link to the updated free course but i'm this week i'm doing about 20, 20 well about 20 new lectures for the uh paid course I've got to bring that up to date so that's what i've been busy doing today i've done six lectures today um so the free course is mechanics and then the paid course is basically how to create a show how to use many chat how to use repurpose how to use live leap how to promote your show, how to get guests on the show, what you do before the show, what you do after the show, a whole range of things to help you improve your viewer numbers. Now, I just want to go with that for a moment. Uh, I did a show yesterday, not on Be Live in Five, but on uh, Derry Burroughs' channel. And when I went live, John knows about this, uh, when I went live, we were being watched by a few people and the reach was about 123. Now, the number of people who watch the show is given by the reach that Facebook gives your post. So if you've got a low reach number when you're live, you won't actually go out to too many people. But 
amazingly yesterday the initial reach was 123 people and i checked about five minutes ago which is nearly 24 hours of the show after the show and that reach has gone up to 375 and the number of views has gone up by well it's trebled so it's important when you do a show to think about what's going to happen after the show so I'm going to come back to that topic in future broadcasts. But for the moment, I shall get off that and I shall go back to my agenda. Uh, John was saying that this cannot possibly be Mr. Jeff Adams because it's a man in a suit and Jeff doesn't wear a suit. Well, he doesn't wear a suit on his shows. But obviously when he's I mean, basically, Jeff helps corporates to go on live video. So I suppose when he's out doing a corporate gig, he does have to wear a suit. Uh, so shout out to Jeff. And just to say that Jeff is live in the Belivers group Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to watch the replay. Probably John is too. And uh, I'm looking forward to the show and to learning. And, well, I've seen John's going to watch the replay. I can actually, in a minute, I can actually Hi. drop down that Please. photo and... I'm looking forward to the show. And I can ask Mr. Upton as he turns off the sound. Yeah, Hello, I was John. busily trying to turn the sound off on the <laughs> on the Facebook page. How are you? I'm I'm brilliant. It's good to see you. Um, Have you yeah, any I'm, water? Sorry. Have you any water? Yes. Well, we're we're uh, we're replicating South Africa. Oh, what's happening in in South Africa? Uh, well, we've had so many. Uh, so many burst mains ah. that water's being rationed and we're not allowed to have baths and showers at the moment. Well, we're asked not to have baths and showers. Um, and yesterday, Cadbury's and uh, Land Rover were both shut down. Oh, God. To ease the water shortage in the, in the area. So, you know. I have sympathy with uh, Rigetti. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to put the title up there as you carry on. So basically, so basically two, of, two, two of the largest two companies, companies in the Midlands. They, they the, are the probably the two largest employers in the area were both shut down for over 24 hours to ease wow. water wow. shortages. They're back now. Yeah. Um, but yeah. There are still lots of it. Um, and at Tesco is not very far from us. They were handing out free water yesterday. In you know six packs of two liters. What? I didn't take advantage because didn't know until after they'd all gone. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a good, it's a good move on their part. Uh, yeah, well, I, I went no. in the. I knew there was going to be problems, so I went in the opposite direction and headed towards the city centre because it's only on the south ring that there are water right. problems, and I just picked some bottles up there of nineteen p water, <laughs> so well, I wasn't really <laughs> paying for it. Yeah. Well, talking... Can I talk about our friend you talked about a few minutes ago? Mr. Adams, yeah? Go. No, uh, to the one. Mr. Laidback. Oh, Peter Stewart. Peter sent me another present. Oh, wow. Go on. Um, it is. It arrived today. Uh huh. Right. Okay. Full I'm screen. assuming it's from Peter because there's no name on it. All and right, okay. The last thing he sent me either, but I'm pretty confident. If you remember a few weeks ago, well, for Christmas, he basically bought me a book. He did, yeah. Um, one of the series that I'm really fond of by a guy called Stuart McBride, uh, and they're all set in Aberdeen or close to Aberdeen. Yeah. And one of the things that like, is consistent in all these books is eating rowies. Now, a few weeks back, you might remember I asked what a row he was you did you did i remember and it well. arrived this morning <laughs> all the way from inverary bakery um yeah wow ross's inverary bakery which i understand inverary is sort of like solely hell is to birmingham yeah okay just south. and here they are this, Stop this. the uh, only thing is they're that hard, it's not true, because he posted them on the 1st, and they didn't arrive till the 6th. <laughs> well, I mean, that's it's I brilliant, what though. Like. I've got four of them. I could use them as foundation for building a wall, though. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant. 
Well done, Mr. Stewart. I'm sure they cost him a pound or two to get it all to buy them and get the error. I mean, the postage yeah. cost him three pound forty to send wow. them. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I hope he's charging it to the business. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, I, I was very amused yeah. this morning. Uh, everybody else yeah. has wanted to know because my daughter came over today and yeah. uh, what the hell are these they look like flat donuts well in fact they're a, a bread that's made with lard ah. and they're very very fattening i remember lard that's the thing we used to cook with back in the day yeah long time ago. This low fat low what's it oil or any of that and and Dripping, do you remember dripping? Oh, oh my yes. mum, whenever she had cooked a chicken or anything like that, she would tip it into a tip off the things, and the day after we'd have bread and dripping. I my was, yeah. can't believe yeah. that we need such stuff. But we did. We did. Now talking of food, which you have uh with regard to your present from Peter, and uh what happened to to your supermarkets over the weekend oh uh, well you saw my post <laughs> um like we haven't got any water uh i couldn't believe it uh, on sunday afternoon when i went to the uh to the local lidl I i'm rather fond of lidl um yeah. and the cupboard was bare so to speak uh no bread hardly any fresh meat um there uh but actually i went back in yesterday and uh, i spoke to agatha the polish lady who's the assistant manager yep. and she said the lorry that was due at six o'clock on sunday morning did not arrive till gone four o'clock in the afternoon yep. and she did it was just cumulative pur purchases she said it wasn't people buying for yeah. the sake of buying it was just simply that they ran out of food due to lorry problems we, but this is the problem with distributing just in distributed just in time supply just in time. yep uh, just in time means you get it fresh on the day but if anything goes wrong i mean the situation in devisors i mean there's a group called devisors issue and so people who went shopping at eight o'clock on saturday morning were saying there was nothing there well that's because there was nothing there. Uh, we went shopping at uh, half four on Saturday in the afternoon, and we end, there's only one item we couldn't get that we normally buy. So it was a question of timing. If you if you if you go early in the morning, you're not going to get anything. What you want to do is to go after they've had the delivery. So you want to spy in the delivery yard, <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as the delivery arrives you can get a phone call and do it and uh you, thank you robert for noticing yes there's an agenda i put the agenda in the description yeah so and now you, we're not looking at the agenda at all <laughs> no no and, but uh, robert hasn't joined us yet robert guest is working if you want to type guest yeah i mean we've survived this now we've come through the other side it's getting warmer now uh, we're heading uh, towards. Yeah, now, now we've got minor flooding as well as burst pipes. It's yeah. crazy, isn't it? Well, there's some people still stranded by snow, aren't they? Yeah, down I in Devon. Cumbria, they've still got 12 and 20 foot drift. Yeah. There's a, a photo on the front page of BBC, well, it was an hour ago, showing that the drifts had gone up the entire side of a house, a two story yeah. house. Yeah, well, and. Yeah. Angelica was was driving. Uh, I think it was Monday night, and she was going down. Going it was daylight. She was going down the road, and snow either side, and just driving along. But basically, what happened was when a car came towards her, she suddenly realised that the snow was pushing in, and she'd only got what was effectively a single carriageway. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Now a show wouldn't be a show on Tuesday unless we had with us. Our friend, our good friend, Mr. Robert C. Stern. So two becomes three. Hello, Robert. Hello, hello. Right. We're getting, been... re we're getting ready for the snow. We're getting about a foot. Oh, wow. Yeah, we, <laughs> well, we don't we're, get... We're promised more by the weekend, so it'll be interesting to see. But everywhere is so wet, I cannot see it settling. It'll, no. It wants to come, it'll come. I'm used to snow all my life. <laughs> we're not. We don't like it. 
Well, we like it when it's white and pristine and you could have a snowball fight or go skiing, but that doesn't happen up in, unless you're up in Scotland. See, my, uh, my sister, she emigrated to Canada when she was 25. Yeah. Uh, uh, sadly, she died two years ago, but uh, she was a couple of years younger than me. And she used to laugh when we had a couple of inches and everything came to a standstill because they'd get 15 foot overnight because she lived close to the Rockies. Um, and they'd all be driving everywhere in the next morning as if nothing had happened. <laughs> the car's going down against this wall of snow is a... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. So you're looking, you've got the snow on the way. Yep. Yep. Okay. You do, do you prepare for it all? Yeah, I go to the supermarket, get a few pieces, get get a little bit of food, and then just hunker down in the house. That's not I can do once it's snowing. Once it starts, that's it. Yeah, I, I went out uh, on Friday night, got some stuff from the food to hunker in for the weekend, you know, and even got some fish and chips on the way back and woke up in the morning to find the roads perfectly clear and... <laughs> And I'd bought enough to stay in for four days. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Better prepared staying. than not. I cannot stay in for more than two days. I've got to get out. That's yeah. one of the downest sides I find to working from home, you know, is you can only do it for so long and then you become stir crazy. But that's what's great about live streaming now. You're not alone. Never. Yeah, but uh, but I, I am not I am not alone. I've got the wife here, haven't I? You know, sometimes you've got to get away from the wife. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a lot of that, huh? uh, We will have been married thirty six years next month. So you, know. before and you go on for blabbing with Britain. <laughs> thirty six years. That's uh, well. It's a long what time. I would probably have been out, got away with, been out released with four murders within 36 years. So. Where's Miss Tina? Uh, Miss Tina is currently on the road, so she can't join us today. So I've got, I've got an agenda, Robert. But I saw. I was in shock. I was like, I better not go on. I'll throw him right off. <laughs> no, actually, there's a, there's a topic that I do want to bring, which is relatively new. Uh, and it is broadcast related, and that's using the replay tag when you view a recorded show. Now, I posted about this the other day. I I saw it. I've seen it for the last week or so when people have seen a, a, watched a recording, and whilst we're watching it, it was taking a second and typed replay in the comment. Yeah. Which, well, I know which, all about this. Over to you, sir. Because it's the first thing I say when we go live. Because you have to remember, when you hit the live button and you hit start, it's going to be approximately 15 to 20 seconds before the first guest can possibly come into your live. Yeah. Whether it's Facebook Live Direct, whether it's Be Live, whether it's Lights, it doesn't matter which one you're on. There is about a 15-second window. So at that point, when I hit the live button and I'm live, and I don't want to just sit there, you know, waiting for yeah. people. I go, my name, who I am. And if you're watching this on the replay, just type replay so I know you are here. Yep. I do That's that good. every video. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I started doing it the other day for the, the people who post their shows in the Belivers group. And uh, I just type replay on one of the ones I was watching. And within 60 seconds, I got a response from the host of the show, and we're getting together for a chat this week. So mm -hmm. it works. I mean, it's not just typing replay increases the reach of the post, puts you in contact with the host of the show. Um, so it's all good. There's no, there's no downside to it, is there? And you got to use that 15 seconds for something in the beginning anyway. A, I, I heard there is a gentleman, I'm trying to find out who it is, who actually in business, he makes an offer in the first 15 seconds for his replay viewers. Ah, that's clever. A little special thing. And at the end of his live, he goes, by the way, if you go watch the replay, there's a special offer in the beginning. So he makes people come back. 
Ja. Das ist gut. Ja. Yeah. Well, we, we, on Friday we can make, uh, sorry, Thursday we can make a special offer, we can give a free rowing. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. yep. so you, see, yep. you don't know what these are, but these are a speciality from where Peter Stewart lives. Got it. And he posted me four, but on the 1st of March, and they only arrived this morning. So now they're that solid, you could use them as a brick. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. But I'm still right. grateful for Peter. Right. He does uh, enjoy working with others. It does. Right. A bit of UK here, and it's, it's, there's a parallel to this in the US, I think, Robert. Uh, April 3rd is Don't Stream and Drive Day in the UK, mm -hmm. organized by our friend Neil, otherwise known as Sergeant TCS. And he started promoting it. Right now, he's out promoting it. He's going around. He was on the police broadcast the other night talking about it. Uh, because it is, I mean, we, John, we've been involved since it started. Yeah, this will be our third year, won't it? It will. It will. Yeah, because I remember people talking about it with uh, Periscope too. Yeah, he's, 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 he's everywhere. Uh, yep. Well, B4B basically supports him on the day, and we, we broadcast almost the entire day um, and re reshow things that other people have tweeted have tweeted and yeah posted We'd, on facebook etc yeah i mean there's there's a thunderclap that goes along with it so our first show of the day is the countdown to midday when the thunderclap goes off yeah so the thunderclap is sending out thousands of tweets thousands of facebook posts uh and this year i notice it's joel com is actually supporting it so that's really? good shout out to joel uh, yeah, Joel's got nine hundred, well, nine hundred and twenty-two thousand followers. So on Twitter, yes. Yeah. So basically, his shout out will help. Um, so we do the countdown to midday, and then we watch the number of tweets going up for the next hour or so. Then we take a break for lunch, and we do an afternoon session, uh, and then we do an evening session as well. So three shows on the day, uh, and this year they will all be on Be Live TV. There so, you go. looking forward to that. Um, so that's downstream and drive day. And a shout out to Sergeant TCS. Thank you for promoting because he, he actually mentioned us in that uh, radio podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And tonight is our friends, Ross and Rachel. Yeah. Every time, it's, every time I hear the name Ross and Rachel and the two of them, I keep thinking of the show Friends. Yep. I think that's, <laughs> that, that might have been accidentally on purpose. <laughs> I think they should use that theme music. <laughs> oh, but then they get uh, banned by Facebook. Well, if somebody oh. else reproduces it, then it's in a better situation. Yeah. And that's going to change soon because uh, Facebook's building up their library, I know. The music library. Yep. I... Um, you obviously can only use it on Facebook. Um, there are some odd, interesting sounds in it, but most of the music is... Um, no, it's going to be turning into a full library. Well, there's a thousand, tr thousand tracks on it at the moment. No, no, no. They're bringing in all the big boy songs, Taylor Swift, The Beatles, stuff like that, because Facebook made two deals now with the top two... Uh, music labels to be able to use the music. So that'll start to filter into the library soon. I think they, they put in they, it was huge amounts of money they're paying for it. Yeah. I wonder if BeLive could access that library. Uh, there's about four pages of terms and conditions. All oh, right, in that case, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I wonder how that would be because I, I we don't even know how it's going to be set up with the music yet, um, with the prime time music people, not the the, the, the stuff they have now. They yeah. don't have it set up yet. I mean, they made the deal right before Christmas, so it's going to take time to filter in how they're going to be doing it. Indeed, but and the way things are going, it's going to give us endless possibilities. 
Okay, well, we'll have to pick a theme tune then, won't we? There you go. A theme tune for each show. Or just have somebody make your own. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, we had a, a theme tune for uh, when I used to do Across the Pond with Leland Best. Uh, Angelica's son, Martin, mm -hmm. did a piece which uh, introduced the show and got us in the right mood for the show. I think that helps as well. If you get music at the beginning of a show to get you in the, you know, Get people lighten up. Yep, indeed, indeed. And this this is not going to read correctly, but I'm displayed. It reads, we are on the Ross and Rachel show on March 27th at 8 p.m. Now, it's not the three of us. When I wrote this, I actually meant that Tina and I will be on with Ross and Rachel at 8 p.m. Eastern on the 27th of March, and John has quickly worked out that that's 1 o'clock in the morning here. I had no idea how I'm going to stay awake for, for 1 o'clock. Lots of call. <laughs> call. It's, it's late for me, is that? It's late. So anyway, thank you. Uh, thank you to both Ross and Rachel for inviting us on the show. Now, uh, by that date, the people the other side of the pond have moved their clock forward, haven't they? We're oh, moving yeah. it this weekend. So we don't move ours to the 29th of March. So that's... I We're think moving it this weekend. We do our little spring ahead. Yeah. Yeah. US is on the 11th and we're on the 25th. I thought it was the 9th for some reason, but... Um, so we, 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 we've got... Oh, 29th is the first day of spring. That's where 29th comes. That's the, the day we're all looking forward to. Yeah, is it a different first day of spring also? Yeah. Oh, man. Why can't we just have universal things? Well, there what? is universal time. We we could all have universal time. Yeah. And we'd love that because it's based on GMT. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd be, you'd be getting up when it was dark, Robert. That wouldn't work. We, you can't have the same time around the world. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean that we got to move our clock and you move your clock. A different weekend. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, I mean, I'll that take your point be on the that. Same weekend. But that yeah. would make sense. I know. That would anyway, be too but we'll still be different from the rest of Europe it's by just, an hour. It's so. just yeah. like I went to a McDonald's by you and I went to a McDonald's by me and I went to a McDonald's in L.A. They should all cost the same. <laughs> don't get us started on the pound versus dollar exchange rate no i don't mean that no. i mean just the actual it's kind of oh. like with for your car for the petra am yeah. i saying it right i didn't call it gas i said the petra petrol yeah <laughs> so if you go to one petrol station and you go to another petrol station sometimes they're different Costs. No, no, not sometimes, bloody always. They can be on either side of the road and be three pence different. It amazes me. We, everybody's got different. I was like, just, okay, gas in the car, this is what it costs. They're raising the gas, everybody raises. They're lowering it, everybody lowers it. It may be so simple in life. I know. <laughs> Your size said it all. <laughs> it, it, I mean, we know that common sense doesn't rule the anywhere. The really. petrol round here is not where you would expect it. You'd expect it to be Asda, you know, which is like, um, God, what's Asda in the States? Walmart. Walmart, yeah. But actually, Sainsbury's has the cheapest petrol round here by four pence, which is crazy stuff. Well, cheapest diesel yeah. for me. I, I've got a diesel car. Mm. See, the gonna... next time you're out, John, you should FaceTime when you're filling in the Petro. FaceTime? I, I, I can't do FaceTime. Facebook Live it. I can't do FaceTime because I've got one of these. You should Facebook Live it. Live. <laughs> Oh, you, you can't you can't do that on the forecourt anyway. We're not allowed. No, you're not allowed to. Uh, it's illegal to use your phone on the forecourt in a, in a petrol station. People wow. do it all the time, but it's on every pump that it breaks the law. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is health and safety, and I, I don't well, know what it, health and safety is like in in the US, Robert. But it drives us crazy over here. The thought is that if you drop it. And the battery comes out, it may create a spark within the petrol vapour. Of course, hardly any phone today has a changeable battery anyway. True. That's how they track you into buying a new one every 
every three years max. <laughs> Mm. All right. Well, I wanted to come on and say hi and see how you guys are doing. I got to get a bunch of stuff done before uh, okay. Munchkin comes home later. Okay, Robert. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again soon. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye. So, what else was on the agenda? Oh, we've got to get. We've got. Uh, we do have an agenda. Let's, let's sort of see what we where we got to. Oh, yes. Right. Okay. Uh, if you're watching this either live or on the replay and you've done a four person broadcast on belive.tv, then could you let uh, Jeff know in the Belivers group uh, or Irene even better? Because uh, Belive are doing promotions of people who've done a four person show. Essentially, they want to take a screenshot from your show of four people on screen, all smiling, of course. And uh, then a quote from yourself, and they'll promote not only four people on screen, but will promote your show. So it gives the recording of your show a new life and a new audience, because everywhere the picture goes, your show goes. So if you have done four people on screen, let Irene at BeLive.TV know. I think that's a great idea. B4B. Oh, yeah, we can. Take we that can. to B. Four F O U R B, shouldn't we? <laughs> now we can have four of us. Well, I'll do that. I'll get a caption ready for the the show on Thursday at ten a.m. <laughs> in the UK. That's if the fourth member turns up. Well, that's true. He's been missing in action yeah, for two weeks. I haven't heard from him, although I did see a couple of posts over the weekend. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we. He's quite. I don't know. We might need a guest fourth host, fourth <laughs> co-host in the future. Uh, right, we said that the uh, free Be Live TV course has been updated, and the link is in the comments. And uh, talking of comments, uh, one of the ways that any live broadcast can increase its reach is if the people watching the show just comment, and you don't need to say anything magical. You can just say hello, and that means that more people will see the show. If you're loving the show and you enjoy the content, and I'm not just talking about the show that John and I are doing now, if you like a show, then share it on your own timeline and let more people see it. That's the only way we can grow. Facebook controls who sees our shows. We can't do that. All we can do is what we're doing today is producing good content with good chat and hopefully involving people. And if you like the show, ah, you see, it works. Alfredo, welcome. Thank you. That's magical. Uh, John, John uh, our please. man in California. <laughs> yeah. But I, I tell you, you actually posted a comment yesterday, which is gobbledygook, didn't you? Oh, gobbledygook. It was actually the word oh, gobbledygook. gobbledygook. Something or other, yeah, just as a bit of fun. Yeah. Do you know what happened when you did that? It increased the reach. And well, I've that's been... because there was about 157 characters in the comment. <laughs> <laughs> the, longer the, co the longer the comment, the better. But and hello does, does increase reach. So thank you for that, Alfred. If you type guess, you can join us on camera. Um, I've been tracking the, the reach of that post, and it, it's, it's basically nearly trebled in 24 hours. Why they actually shrink it when you go live, I don't know. They actually want people to catch the replay. Who knows? Unless they're going to turn around one day and say, right, we're going to give you the reach. The maximum reach you ever had on one of your posts is yours forever. How's that? Or they want people to watch the replays because then they're going to stick adverts at the front and back. John, as if they would do that. Talking of, talking of which, um, I was testing you, seeing you caught me, and uh, so did April. Uh, what I'm trying to do I was doing it wrong yesterday, is to actually come onto a BeLive.TV broadcast and play video with sound. Now, we know that native BeLive.TV can't do that. So I was experimenting yesterday, uh, and the one that you saw didn't work, but I got it working after that. So I might be able to get a video up on uh, on Thursday morning's show. Is that so using ManyCam? Using ManyCam, yes. Basically, you, you, my camera is replaced by ManyCam, yeah, a ManyCam feed. So anything that's on the ManyCam in the background will come through. So we just have to experiment with it and see what we can actually achieve. But yeah, we should be able to, yeah, 
should be able to pay, play a live video with sound. Uh, now, there are two versions, three versions of Minicam. One is free, and then there are two of the paid versions. I'm hoping that we can persuade somebody to try this with the free version and see what happens. I've got a feeling that the camera might be watermarked in some way. But does that matter if you're playing a live video? And when you do play, when, sorry, when you're playing a recorded video, when you it's are playing live. a recorded video. I know what you meant. Thank you. Well, I've got, we've got people watching. I know it's amazing, but we've got people watching. If, <laughs> if, you, if you actually, when you actually do play a recorded video, what you should, of course, do is put a caption up underneath that says recorded. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You just type in recorded and add that as the agenda item, bring it up on screen so that when you play the recorded video, Facebook will not get annoyed that you're trying to fool everybody into saying that this is live. But it is. I mean, we are live, aren't we? I think. Yep, yeah, it's definitely me. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we've gone through. Let's just do a recap. Creating frames for your shows, and that's in the Belivers group. Captioning your recorded show. Uh, John, do you tend to watch a sh when your videos are going through the feed? Would you be affected by anything that's captioned? Do, do you know what happens quite often? Nine out of ten of them are running on a background if you type ie they're in another window that's open while i'm working on another all right window. okay yeah so you don't actually see it so okay. captioning it is unlike i mean i'll pop back in every now and again to have a quick yep. look um but i mean i've watched a couple of shows of different people today um live shows not necessarily done on be live um while I've been doing my live tweets from the Hotel Olympia show day two, right. whilst I'm 135 miles away from the show. <laughs> Brilliant. And Jeff Adams is on at 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow in the Belivers group. And today... We uh, won't be watching him, will we? We'll have no, to we watch won't. the replay and type hash replay. Indeed. Good thinking. And Ross and Rachel are on uh, live today at 8 p.m. Eastern. And we won't see that either, will we? No, uh, that's not live. One o'clock in the morning. I have actually watched uh, April at two o'clock in the morning on a couple of occasions when I haven't been able to get to sleep. Right. OK. Well, speaking of April, I'm just going to bring April's photograph up on screen. Uh, it was a pleasure on Sunday. I did a weekend show. I don't normally yeah, broadcast no, I the thought, weekend. Hang on, hang on. This bloke uh, keeps telling me he <laughs> takes the weekends off, and there he is advertising a Sunday show. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good point. But this, the show was uh, – it's myself, April, and Adair, and we're joining uh, Co Colorado, I think. Yep, Colorado with Wiltshire with Adelaide. And the only time we can get together and for it to work for everybody is Sundays because a day, sorry, April works during the week. So she's not available basically any time during the week. Uh, a day is Australia. So the time is upside down. So the only time we can get together is 9.30 p.m. in the UK, which is 4.30 p.m. in uh, the USA East Coast. And it's eight o'clock for a dare. So it was an ideal time. And we had a, a brilliant show and good fun. I, I watched um, Red Lips Roger, as I keep calling her. She does like it, I think, really. Um, uh, with her Broadcasting with her son with her the other day. Oh, uh, well, brilliant. a couple of weeks ago, I think, actually. Yeah. Because um, yeah. her son uh, has, well, I think it's autism. So, uh, it, yeah. in, indeed. I mean, it's... It, Basically, I mean, we can only guess at how difficult it is to to be a parent of an autistic child. And well, we have some experience of autism in our household, uh, not as parents, but Phil worked for almost seven years for uh, autism for the autism society as a carer. Uh, right. Okay, yep. uh, he's gone from okay. autistic. Uh, children um, and adults, because obviously autism goes all the way through. So he used to work with people that 
shouted at him or never said a word. And now he's working with people with dementia who can't remember who he is, oh. <laughs> which is a bit sad, but uh, oh, he yeah. has been working with them for, God, he's yeah. got to be almost a year now he's been doing that. Um, quite interesting. Oh. Indeed. Right, so we're on on Thursday, 10 a.m. Yeah. With Peter, with the aforesaid Peter Stewart, uh, and uh, hopefully with Mr. Stephen Silk. Yeah, Lord um, Red should be with us again, hopefully. Well, it balances things up, doesn't it? Two Liberals, one Labour, and one well, ultra conservative. conservative. <laughs> yeah. It you know, really does. Your Scottish it, Conservative is it, 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 not quite a full enough description, is it? It should be one ranting Scottish Conservative. Uh, I do well, enjoy it, actually, to be honest with you, when he gets carried away. But then yeah. sometimes you just have to tell him to tone it down a bit, don't you? Uh, well, I, I did more than that once, just for his own health. Um, oh, well, I, I kind of was watching from the sidelines when you shoved him down the bottom. Because if you remember, that was a day I was late getting on because yeah. we had no, I can't remember, the way we had no internet or no electric. It was one or the other anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But he is a smashing bloke, even when he sings, oh, yeah. he's a smashing bloke. <laughs> true, true. Oh, he's a good singer as well, it's, you know. I mean, probably his ears probably burning now. Uh, you're always expecting when we're doing a show for him to pop up in the audience, but uh, I'm amazed be... we haven't seen him today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, he does he does very well. Though. I'm looking forward to him starting his show and getting it on the road again because he's very good at it. He's got a sense of humour and a way with his guests. And uh, I know he's been not been live broadcasting for some time but it's good to see him back on the monday nights at seven o'clock the best He's... show he ever did was the live one with the guy uh, who owns the car garage uh-huh sells cars when when the guy got up and walked outside and showed you the different <laughs> <for sale. laughs> I mean, it was brilliant. Just brilliant. it was brilliant because it was yeah. really interactive because Peter said something like, what have you got in stock? And he said, I'll show you. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> he was on a phone. Because he was on a phone and then he just took the phone with him. <sighs> right, okay. Oh, well, uh, I'm surprised Alfredo didn't pop in. I must be. I mean, what time is it now? On the It's 9.52. In yeah. the morning, yeah. In the morning, yeah. So it's That's early in the working, day. Right, I'm going to put the frame on again. You can't actually see this, but I did a frame for the show using my how to build a frame method. And I tested it because you can create a show and you can actually test it and see what it looks like on the show. The unfortunate thing is that the background that you actually test against is white. Yeah. The background that we've got now around it is the, the blotted brown. Yeah. So <laughs> it's invisible. I mean, you can just about make out a bit of orange in the bottom right hand corner and then some orange writing in the bottom left. So I'm, I'm going to try again to do a frame for Thursday's Blabbing for Britain and I'm going to do it all in light colours so that it fits. Yes, the hosting by Tina Shang and Stephen Healy is only visible when one of the triangles pops behind it. What about if I do this? Just a minute. That doesn't work either, does it? Well, nothing changed, though. I can't. I don't think. All so. right. You, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can't. See. Well, that... Mind you, don't forget. Uh, it will take a couple of minutes, to, a little while to catch up, won't yeah. it? Yeah. So I'm going to leave it there for a second, and then we will come back. Okay. And if I go picture in picture, no. And picture in picture the other way, no. It's a rubbish. It's a rubbish lower third. So I'm going to go away and try again. Um, I'm going to switch it off now. What about putting 20% white behind it? That's a good idea. I mean, at the moment, it is in fact well, that's, that's holy transparent. I do somewhere between 20 and 40% white when I want a headline to stand out on a picture without ruining the picture. Okay, yep. I'm going to experiment, John. I'm graphically oh, challenged. I would but I'm, I'm going to have a you know, if I've got a photo and I want a headline on it that I want, to be fairly visible but not overly intrusive i'll draw a 20 or 40 percent sh shadowed 
Right. Transhabited is not the word I'm looking for. Translucent is the kind of thing I'm... Yeah, well, the, the, it starts off as transparent, doesn't it? And you're saying that something allows the light through. Yeah, um, well, if you, uh, if you draw a, a white yep. a square... Yeah. Just drawing one there. Okay. This is live video. Yeah, and uh, you, you'll have something. Um, where is it? So you'll have something that allows you to slide her down between a hundred percent and sort of zero percent, but oh, gives you then okay. a transparent, a transparentish. But it's not the right word. But translucent background. I was looking for a word that on the program I was using that would have described it properly, but it doesn't have anything. It just has a slider. <laughs> <laughs> it's slider is good. It's, it's, a gradient. it's, it's gradiators. It's fireworks, which was abandoned, which was a macromedia product, which was bought by Adobe and abandoned by Adobe in favour of Photoshop. Um, yeah. But it's a million times easier to use than Photoshop. If you could put a link in after the show, then you can't buy it for love and the money now. So, all oh, right, okay, <sighs> right to everybody who's watched the show. This is I've got to do the outro as well, John. Um, to everybody who's watched the show, thank you. Um, and especially to, to Robert who joined us on camera, thank you to Alfredo, to Lewis, to Raven, and to Mr. Upton who joined me on camera, and to everybody who's watched the show. If you've watched this far on replay, then you deserve a medal and you can collect it by typing in replay. <laughs> if you watch this and type in replay, I'll be in touch with you afterwards. John, thanks for hopping on and joining me. Uh, just, Tina, sorry. Just you mentioned that magic word medal. Yeah, um, okay. I emptied another one of uh, the boxes from my dad's house and I, I found his uh, Suez Canal medal. Oh, wow. Um, that's, wrapped that's, up in the box it came from the day it was new. That was 47, wasn't it? At 50 something, because he came back yeah, from the yeah. Suez and married oh, mum, yeah. and then I was born yeah. not long after that. So 52, yeah. 53, 53, I think. Yeah. But I don't think he got the medal until uh, 2000 and something. Right. My dad was out in Singapore. Yeah, right. Probably around the same time. Anyway, right. stop you there. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, down. I'll okay. let you do the show without me. <laughs> okay, John, take care. See you soon. Bye. All right, bye. Uh, so to everybody who's watched us on the show today, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you all again soon. I'm going to end the broadcast now and uh, see you all later. So ending the broadcast.